Okay, so scientific notation, <clears throat> kind of really cool idea here. And the reason for scientific notation is that as numbers get astronomically large, it's really hard to keep track of the place values, and it's really, really, really hard to, to write them. Sometimes numbers get so big that it might take a better part of a page to write the number down. So because of ideas like that, scientists began, scientists and mathematicians started using this thing called scientific notation. The idea of scientific notation is to take an enormously large number and then change its form. Now, it's important that we're not changing the, to say we're not changing the value of the number, we're changing the form in which we write it. In the same way, in a very simple idea, if, if I said 4, I could also say 2 plus 2, couldn't I? As long as this is equal to that, and it is. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a really big number, and we're going to write it in the form a times 10 to the nth power. Now, there are some rules here. That is that this a value here, this a value is this a value, that a will has to be greater than or equal to 1, and a also has to be less than 10. So let's go over this again. How would we read this compound inequality? Start in the middle. a is greater than or equal to 1. Go back to a. a is less than 10. And n, this number up here, is an integer. That is to say, it's not a, it's not a rational number. It's not 2 thirds. It's not 3 halves. It's negative 7 or possibly positive 5, etc. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at this for a second. <clears throat> we're going to take our number here. We're going to take 65,900 times 10 to some power here is going to equal, has to be equal to 65,900. So I think it's true to say right now that if we had 10 to the 0 power, well, 10 to the 0 power is worth 1, isn't it? And this times 1 would equal that, wouldn't it? But we're trying to stay inside this rule, and we're saying that a has to be less than 10, and 65,900 is not less than 10. So what I'm going to do here is so I'm going to move, take the, we know that the decimal point is here, don't we? Our decimal point is here, and I'm going to move it over one place to the left, and as I move it to one place to the left, I'm going to increase the value of n by 1. And believe it or not, this times this would still equal that, but this number is still not. Now we'd have 6,590. But that's not less, greater than 1, but less than 10. So we move it again. Now we'd write 6,000, I'm sorry, we'd write 659 times, right? We'd move this over again, times 10 to the second power. And believe it or not, it equals this. Now, some of you are sitting there going, what in the world is he talking about? So let's just go prove it for a second, okay? Let's skip over to our calculator for a second and prove that this is happening. What I'd like to say to you is, is this. At some point, at some point, I'm going to move this thing over far enough I'm going to move it over once, twice, three times, four times, I think. I'm going to move it over four times, and we're going to get 6.59 times 10 to the fourth is equal to, and it has to still be equal to the number we started with. And I think that this will be in scientific notation. Right now, we're not, uh, in the process here, we're not in scientific notation yet. At the end, when we get here, this will be in good scientific notation. Look at this for a second. Isn't it true? that 6.59 is greater than or equal to 1 and less than 10, right? And I just keep increasing this. Let's look at this with a calculator. It's a lot easier to see. So I started off the first one, the, the first proof. We took our number 6, uh, 65,900 times 10 to the 0 power. And lo and behold, it was that number, right? And now I'm saying to you, what I want to do is this. I want to move this place, this thing over. Let's see if I can show you what I'm doing here. So what I'm going to do is the decimal place is right here, isn't it? Decimal place is right here, isn't it? I'm going to move it over to here. So now what I want to type in when I go back to my calculator, I want to type in 6,590 times 10 to the first power. And I'm hoping that when I do that, it's still going to equal 65,900. So let's see if that does work. So I'm going to move the decimal point over. So it's 6590. It was 0, 0, right? Now it's just 0 times 10 right not to the zero power we move this to the left so we're going to increase this by one to the first power oh my gosh you see what i did i didn't raise it to the first to the first power i multiplied it by 100 i kind of freaked out there for a second let's do it again 6590 times 10 to the first power that's what i meant to say and that does work wow kind of freaked myself out for a second okay good for me I'm going to do this again. I want to now I want to move it over again because this number is still not less 
than 10, and it has to be. So I'm going to move this over again to here. And I'm going to have 6, 000, uh, sorry, 659 right, times 10 squared. And I'm hoping, again, that when we hit enter, the calculator is going to give us this value. Again, let's see if that doesn't work. So I move the decimal point one place over to the left. That gives us 659 times 10 squared. And look, the number is still staying the same, except for this one mistake I made up here where I typed the wrong numbers. And the number, it's working, isn't it? But remember, this number right here, I have to keep moving the decimal point until I get the decimal point is less than 10, greater than or equal to 1. So I have to move it again. So I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move it again. And I'm going to move the decimal point over one more place. Right Now I'll get, get 65.9, and I'm going to raise this. Right? So I'm going to have 65.9 times 10 to the third power. And I know I'm going to, I believe I'm going to get this number back again, aren't I? I'm going to get 6,590 back here again. But remember, scientific notation says this number, this A value, has to be greater than or equal to 1, less than 10. And 65 is greater than 1, but certainly not less than 10. So let's see what happens. So 65.9, and I said times 10 to the not second power, but the third power. You see, as, I, as I'm moving the decimal point to the left, you see the, the exponential value keeps increasing by one, and hit enter. And look, there's our number again. Finally, I think uh, we're gonna make this work out, and I'm sorry for taking a long way through it, but I wanna make sure that we see why we're doing what we're doing. Now I'm gonna move the decimal point again, right? Now I'm gonna get 6.59 times 10 to the what? Not the first, not the second, not the third, but the fourth. Remember, this is our a value right here, right? This is a times 10 to the nth power. Remember, a a has to be greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. So ask yourself, take that 6.59. 6.59 is less than 10 and greater than or equal to 1. Let's do it. Is 6.59 greater than or equal to 1? Yes. Is 6.59 less than 10? Yes. So finally, we have our a in the right place, don't we? So let's see, what it, see if it works and see if we still get the value that we have to get back. So I'm going to take 6.59, right, times 10, not to the first, not to the second, not to the third, but to the fourth, right? Remember, every time I move the decimal point of A over to the left one, I have to increase the exponential value of 10 by 1. So let's see if this doesn't work. So there it is. So if we go back to our problem, if we go back to our problem here, Isn't this what we thought we were going to get, right? There's our A value and this. And now we know, because we use our calculator, that this times this is still this number. That's the thing that people kind of get turned around about a little bit. Okay, you guys, good work. I hope you took good notes, and we'll work out some other examples, okay?